Hi, in this video, we will talk about dynamic role level security in Power BI. So before we go and talk about dynamic role level security, we need to understand why we need to learn about another role level security concept or what are the pitfalls of static role level security that we have learned so far. In a static role level security, the logic of security is static in the role definition. So when you have too many roles, then implementing static roles is not really an option. Suppose you need to allow the salesman to see records only for his country or even only his city, then we need to create one role for each city and then add that salesperson to that role. And as you can imagine, that's a very hugely impossible and a mundane task to create. So here, our dynamic role level security comes to the rescue. In dynamic role level security, you need to create just one role and maintain the logic of security within the data model itself. That is, within the tables itself, store the user who can see that record. So when this user logs in, he will only see records that belongs to him. This way of implementing security is dynamic because now each logged in user will see a different bunch of data. So now let's go to Power BI and see how do we implement this dynamic row level security. So in Power BI, for this example, I will use the data entered in the Power BI itself. There will not be any external data sources the way we saw for static row level security. Dynamic security works with any data source as long as we have related data rows in the tables. So let's go and create two simple tables. So first go to the external data section and go to enter data. The first table that I will create is the vendors table. The vendors table has information about different vendors. So let me go and create them. So the first column name will be vendor ID and I will go and enter three different vendor names or probably four different vendor names. And then the second column will be the vendor name and the third column will be my email ID. And as you might have guessed, I will be using this email ID to detect who has actually logged into the Power BI service. So let me go and fill up uh, sample data. So first I will give Karthik. The second one is Mohit. The third one is Vandan. And the last one I will give myself Ravi Kiran. And finally, I will go and enter the email addresses. So let me expand that so that you can see the entire email address, the email address for the second user and the email address for the third one. And finally, I will enter email address for my email ID as well. So this is the data. This is my vendor data and I will name the table as vendor and I will say load. So the vendor table is created successfully. Next, I will go and enter the transaction data. So this table will have only two different columns. The first one is the vendor ID and the second one is the transaction amount conducted by those different vendors. So the vendor ID, I will just have a couple of them. Okay. And then I will manually enter some of the numbers. Okay. So these are very random numbers just to illustrate the point. So nothing really specific. Once I have done that, I will name the table as a transaction table and I will say load. So the vendor table has loaded successfully. And if you go to the relationship tab, note that the Power BI has automatically detected the relationship between the vendor IDs from the vendor table and the transaction table. So now let me use a Power BI visual. So I will use a table visual and I will have the name, email ID and the transaction amount. So I will expand that so that we get a better view. So now, what we need to do is we need to add a measure and that will basically create the username column. Okay. So let me go to the transaction table and or rather I should be going to the vendor table and 
saying a new measure. So I'm going to name this measure called a user and user will nothing be equivalent to user principal name. Okay. So the spelling is not correct and that's why it's not showing up. So it's user principal name. Okay. So this is the function that I'm going to use. So if you want, you can go ahead and use username as well. The difference between username and user principal name is that in Power BI service, username will show you domain slash username and the user principal name will show you username at domain.com. So it will show it as an email address and that's the reason I'm using it as user principal name. So let me say enter and let me create the measure. Once I create the measure, let me add the user to my uh, table and note that in Power BI desktop, it shows the user who has logged into this particular system. Okay. So do not take this information uh, any seriously. Once we deploy it to Power BI service, only then we will see the real value of having this user measure. So now let me create the role. So go to security and click uh, manage roles in the manage role window, select create and let me give the name of this role as uh, vendor and uh, tables that I want to filter is the vendor table and uh, the column that I want to filter is the email. So I'm going to say email is nothing but user principal name. So you see where I'm coming here. So basically when we deploy to Power BI service, the emails will be displayed for each and every record and the user principal name will be taken from your logged in credentials and it will try to match whether this email ID is equal to the user principal name or the logged in user. Okay. And it will only filter the records for that logged in user. Okay. So since we are giving like this, we should be seeing only my record when I log into my Power BI service. That's, that's when I apply the role. Okay. So let me go and save that. So now let me go and publish this to my Power BI service and let me save it first and publish it to the same workspace and just make sure that you have a different name to this particular Power BI file else it will just go and replace the data set that you have already created for static role level security. So it is done now. What I will do is I will open this PBX within the Power BI service. And note that instead of domain slash username as in Power BI desktop, we are able to get the email address of the logged in user in Power BI service. So in summary, we have seen the powers of dynamic role level security and we have deployed a model with dynamic role level security enabled within the Power BI service. Yet we have not seen the real power of dynamic role level security, which we will do that in the next video.